when we start trigonometry, the very first thing we learn is something called Sokotoa. Let's talk about what that means in this video. So let's say we take uh, a right triangle. Remember that a right triangle is just a triangle which has a 90 degree angle. So maybe a triangle that looks something like this. Um, the right angle is usually denoted with this little half square. So that's 90 degrees right there. And often when we write a triangle like this, we write capital letters for the angles. So something like this. So angle B, capital B here refers to this angle. Capital A refers to this angle. And capital C refers to this angle, which is 90 degrees. And then the opposite sides are denoted with the corresponding lowercase letters. So if this is capital A, this is little a, this side would be denoted little b, and here is little c. Uh, this longest side here, this is called the hypotenuse of this right triangle. All right, now, Sokotoa, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to write it vertically, and it is a little bit convenient for what I'm going to explain next. So S, in Sokotoa, S stands for sine, C stands for cosine, T is tangent, O stands for opposite, H is for hypotenuse, A stands for adjacent. And then just like we said, H stands for hypotenuse, O stands for opposite, and A is adjacent. And kind of, it means sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, I don't expect you to know what that means yet, but we're getting to it. All right. So when we're given a triangle, a uh, right triangle has to be, whenever you use Sokotoa, make sure you only apply it to a right triangle. The very first thing we have to do when we do a trigonometry problem like this is decide on an angle to look from. And we never look from the right angle. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let me draw another triangle down here. Um, I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Let me draw another triangle over here. Excuse me. Say something like this. I just don't want to put any letters on it. Now, when I say look from an angle, we never look from here, like I said, because we never look from the right angle. Let's say I decide to look from this angle, so I'll just try to draw a little eye here. When I decide that I'm looking from this angle, then this side here, the opposite side, this is the opposite side, okay? Because I'm, I've decided to look from here, then this side is the opposite, and this side here, well, let me do this one first. This one's the hypotenuse. And the other side here is the adjacent. You know, what does adjacent mean? It kind of just means beside, right? So when I'm looking from this angle, which side is beside it? Well, kind of there's two sides that are beside it, this one and this one. This one's called the hypotenuse, so there's no way it could be the adjacent. So it would have to be this one, right? This is the side that's kind of beside the angle I'm looking from, and it's not the hypotenuse. Now, let's say over here I draw another triangle kind of the same one and but this time this is my right angle of course but this time I decide to look from this angle instead so here's where my eye is okay when I decide to look from this angle what are the three sides called well this side is still the hypotenuse that doesn't change but since I'm looking from this angle now over here now is the opposite side right and the other one here, which is beside it, which is adjacent to it, is called, of course, the adjacent side. Okay, now, so the point I'm trying to get across here is that the hypotenuse is always the same. That, that never changes. But the opposite and the adjacent um, are relative to which angle you're looking from. If you're looking from this angle over here, 
then the opposite side would be this one and the adjacent side would be this one. But if for some reason you decide to look from this angle up here, then the opposite side is the one down here and the adjacent is the one right here. So before the words opposite and adjacent mean anything, you always have to decide on an angle to look from, either this one or this one, but never the right angle, right? You never look from the right angle. So I think we have enough background now to actually try a problem. So let's see how this goes. Um, squeeze it in right here. So let's draw a line here. And I'm going to draw a line here. I want to do two different problems. Sorry. Let's do one problem where we have to find a side. And let's do another oops. Let's do another problem where we have to find an angle. So you'll see what I mean in a second here. So let's say we have uh, an angle of, I don't know, 48 degrees, it doesn't really matter. And this is uh, 16 centimeters maybe. And I want to find this length here. So this problem, I'm going to be finding a side. Over here, I'm going to find an angle. Let's say that this is 12 centimeters and this is 15 centimeters. And I'm interested in finding this angle here. Why don't we call it capital A? So this question is, what is the measure of side X? And here, the question is, what is the measure of angle A? These are basically the two different styles of questions you're going to get. You're either going to find the measure of a side, which the units in this particular one, the units would be in centimeters. And over here, we're finding an angle, and the measure would be in degrees, right? So let's tackle these two problems and see how they go. Um, so in this problem, like I said, the very first thing is don't don't think about opposite and adjacent and all that stuff because we haven't even decided on an angle to look from. Before the words opposite and adjacent mean anything, you have to decide on an angle to look from. Now we know we don't look from this angle. It has to, we're either going to look place our eye here and look from there or up here. Well, in this problem, this angle is not even really involved, so it doesn't make sense to look from that. We're going to be placing our eye right here and looking from this angle. Once I've done that, then the words opposite and adjacent have meaning, right? Now that I've decided to look from this angle, over here, this is my opposite side. Of course, this is the hypotenuse. And even though this is the adjacent, I'm not even going to bother writing it down because it doesn't have any relevance to this problem. We're not asked to find it, and we're not even told its value, so we're, I'm going to ignore that. So in some sense, I want to choose a trig function that involves O and H, right? In Sokotoa, which one, what, Sokotoa, I'll just quickly write it. Which trig function, sine, cos, or tan, involves O and H? Well, that's this one, right? Sine. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That's the purpose of Sokotoa, to help you decide which trig function to use. So we're going to use sine, S-O-H. So sine. Now I see this sometimes, people write sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, so they might write x over 16 or something. We never want to write sine with nothing in front of it. We always have to write sine of a letter or sine of a number. In this case, it's sine 48, right? All right, so sine of the angle I'm looking from, sine 48, is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And now this is just kind of like an algebra equation. Um, you know, sine 48 is just a number. You just type that in your calculator. You Just one thing is make sure your calculator is in degrees, okay? Because 48 is a degree value. I can put a little degree there if you want. So if your calculator is not in degrees and you try to type it in, you're going to get a weird answer. So let's see, sine 48. Let's say I round that, maybe 0 0.743 equals x over 16. And I can maybe put this over 1 and then cross multiply, right? 1 times x is just x. And 16 times that number, 16 times 0.743 is what? It's 11.888, whatever. I'll just, just round it to 8.89, say. 
and that's in centimeters. So we've just found the length of that side. That's one style of problem, okay? Now over here, we're gonna do the other style of problem where we find an angle. All right, so which angle do I look from? I know I don't look from the right angle. The angle I'm gonna be looking from is either here or up here. Well, this angle is not even involved in this problem, so I'm not gonna be looking there. Here's where I wanna place my eye, right? Once I've decided that, then the words opposite and adjacent have meaning. This side over here is gonna be my opposite, and this side down here is gonna be my adjacent. And of course, this side is the hypotenuse, but this side, that's not involved in this problem, so I'm going to ignore it. It's not relevant. So A and O, or O and A, which of the trig functions in Sokotoa involve O and A? Well, I think it's right here, right? O and A, that's using tan. So Sokotoa has just assisted us by letting us know that tan is what we want to use here. So tangent, now remember, I don't just write tan, right? I got to write something here, either a letter or a number. Since I don't know that as a number, it has to be a letter, so it's going to be tan of A. Tan of A equals the opposite over the adjacent, so 15 over 12. Now this is a little bit different than what we did over here. Here we just did kind of cross multiplying those numbers and we got the answer. But when you see this, you want to find angle A. I sometimes see a weird thing like people divide both sides by tan or something like that. That's, that's just uh, completely wrong. You don't want to do that, that has no meaning. Think of A as kind of being trapped inside the tan here. And in order to free it, we use the inverse tan. So if tan A equals this fraction, then A, equals tan inverse of that fraction, okay? And if you look on your calculator, uh, uh, on your calculator where the tan key is, above it will be the tan minus one key. Now this has nothing to do with negative, right? This is, this is just the inverse tangent function. That's what that minus one mean. it means. It means inverse. So the inverse tangent of 15 over 12 is gonna give us our answer. And usually the way we type that in your calculator is we press second function or shift and then the tan button and you should see tan inverse come up and then maybe open a bracket up and do 15 divided by 12, close your bracket and press equals and then we get our answer. It's uh, 51.3 degrees. And so notice this answer was in centimeters, but this answer is in degrees. Whenever you do tan inverse or sine inverse or cos inverse, you always expect your answer to be in degrees, not in a unit like centimeters. All right, so these, that's Sokotoa. Now, we only did an example here with tan and sine, but similarly, if you had adjacent and hypotenuse, you could use cosine. Um, but that's the basics, okay? You're either going to be using Sokotoa on a right triangle to find the missing side, like over here, or you're going to use Sokotoa on a right triangle to find the missing angle, like we did over here. So that's the basics of Sokotoa. We'll practice some more in some future videos.